Hello dear friends, this is a video of laparoscopic right hemiculectomy done for ileocecal tuberculosis. This was a 42 year old male who was in anti-tubercular treatment for one month with recurrent vomiting and pain, went into acute nystagmal obstruction and laparoscopic right hemiculectomy was planned because of advantages. It has better wound and better cosmesis, shorter hospital stay and early return to work, less pain, better pulmonary function less instance of ileus, less complication, less addition and less hernia formation. Port placement were, camera port was in the left paraumbilical area and two working port, one in epigastrium and other in hypogastrium and finally stapler was fired to the right allic fossa port. So you can see as we put in we found a big ileocecal tubercular mass, a lump. So we planned a limited hemiculectomy, it's a benign condition. So along the white line of tall, the colon is mobilized through the lateral peritoneum, we are using a Ligasure, a bipolar device. We will continue mobilizing. Now we have come to the mobilization of hepatic flexure of the colon. So you can see there is a lot of inflammation because of chronic tuberculosis, lot of inflammation. You can see tubercles in the peritoneum and planes are not very well preserved, so we have to be careful. So you can see a big ileocecal mass and you can see ureter peristalsis crossing the alic vessels. You have to be careful about that. So we continue the mobilization of hepatic flexure of colon using Ligasure and then we will decide a point of division of colon, distal colon at the hepatic flexure. We don't have to be very radical in benign conditions. So we will create a window. We are creating a window through the mesocolon and then we will clear the colon all around. We will divide the appendicitis epicloic in all the fat so that we get a clear stapler margin, clear colonic area for firing of the stapler. So once we have cleared the all over and then we will put a 12 mm port through the right elec fossa from where we will remove do an aleostomy. So once we have cleared the colon we will put a endo stapler and then we will fire. We are using white cartridge because we get less bleeding. So, so white cartridge we fired 145 but it was not complete so we fired another cartridge. And in this patient was on ATT for one month with off and on vomiting and not digestion. So patient was nutritionally not very well preserved, albumin was low. So we thought that we will do a diversion, ileostomy and we will restore the continuity after building up the patient. So we planned right hemicolectomy with end ileostomy. So now we continue dissecting the mesocolon and as you see there is a lot of inflammation and the chronic inflammation because of tuberculosis and big lump, inflamed lump. So we have to be careful because planes were not preserved and dissection and mobilization of ileocecal mass. We have to be careful that we don't injure the ureter. So carefully the dissection was done. There was some inflammation. So there was some bleeding and we have to be carefully mobilize this ileocecal mass with big lump and a lot of inflammation. Then the part of the ileum, point of ileum which was to be divided, we created a window, with entered window again using Ligasure and we reject the small part of ileum with cecum and up to the hepatic flexure. So we continue, you can see a big thickened mesentery with lot of lymph, lymph nodes and inflammation. So after mobilization, we will divide the mesentery and we will divide the ileocolic vessels along with branches. We will be using bipolar and ligasure. So with the help of bipolar and ligasure, we are removing and dividing the mesocolon. There is a lot of inflammation, lot of thickening, lymph node masses were there. So with Ligasure and Bipolar we could divide whole mesentery and once we have divided then we will remove this specimen through a small trephine or whole male abdominal wall for stoma. So we will just make sure that everything is divided and then hemostasis will be checked. And then we'll bring the specimen from the same site where we are going to plan do an ileostomy. So once the division is complete, then first of all we will check the mobility because sometimes in tuberculosis mesentery is shortened. So we'll look for check for the hemostasis, then we'll check that there is no twist because in an ileostomy we can have a twist, and then we can see the point which has to be brought out is easily mobile to the abdominal wall. Then using a wound protector, we remove the specimen from the ileostomy site. And then finally, again we check that end stoma is not twisted, mesentery is straight. We took what looked for the hemostasis, removed the gauge, 
and then finally we will divide and we will desufflate under vision that there is no twist and no hemostasis and then we will mature the allosteme after dividing the specimen. So this is the final picture. Thank you for patient listening.